It says in Ephesians 6, starting at verse 13, it says, Therefore, take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil, evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So what are, what are the things here? Gird your loins with truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, take up the shield of faith, take the helmet of salvation, take the sword of the Spirit. That's the way... Christians are supposed to be dressed. That's the attire of the well-dressed Christian. Amen. All right, so the first thing is that he said was gird your loins, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Now, the focus of, st of the statement is not the gird part. The focus of the statement is the loins. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. the gird, that's, that's kind of that's denotes a belt yeah. that would hold up the loin covering, right? But this pronouncement is about keeping your loins covered. Now, you know what loins are. I, I assume that you know what loins are. For those of us who not. The loins is your... Stomach? No, no, no. The loins are your genital area. Oh. Okay? Reproductive parts. Reproductive parts. And that's the key to this, okay? Yes. That your loins are your reproductive parts, okay? Um, the first thing that Adam and the woman did when they sinned in the garden was to cover their loins. That's right. Okay? Genesis 3 7, all right? If it were about the belt, and a lot of, I mean, a lot of Bible scholars tell you it's about the belt they were wearing. Well, it's not about the belt at all. That's like me, you know, you can say what's important is I've got pants, I've got slacks on and a belt. If I take my belt off, maybe the pants will, but that's what's important is the pants. That's right. Cover. <laughs> okay. The covering. The covering, all right? Okay. In the second chapter of Acts, Peter who is speaking of David to the multitudes on, multitudes on the day of Pentecost, related the fact that King David, and this I'm reading now from Acts 2.30, it says, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne. Mm. Jesus, the Messiah, came from the loins of David. Oh, it's the place of the seed of life, all right? Mm. In the letter to the Hebrews, the writer speaking of tithes in the priesthood and talking about Abraham when he was, you know, tied to Melchizedek, mentions that Levi, which is generations removed, generations yet to come, it said, was yet in the loins of his father, Hebrews 7.10. So the loins are the place of the reproductive power, the seed of life. This protecting or covering that we're talking about now here in the full armor of God is simply because the devil is deathly afraid of Christians, us bond servants, reproducing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the loin, centers of reproductive power, is the target of Satan's seductive wiles and his schemes. Mm. Not the heart, not the brain, but the loins. Mm. And all too many people, particularly in this day and age, when sexual permissiveness is a cesspool flooding our society, people are being led about by their loins. You've got to get the fact that. that the loins, what that's talking about, is this, this is where the seed of life is. Yes. And Satan hates the idea that we can bring new life into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We can be used to do that, right? Yes. By proclaiming the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness. So, but, but think about this. I mean, we are living in a, uh, you know, I, I think I said it properly, a cesspool. Mm -hmm. It's a cesspool. And, and the immorality in our society today is absolutely rampant. And that is an incredible understatement. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And yet it says in the book of Revelation, in the ninth chapter, the end of the ninth chapter, it talks about these end days when men will not repent of their immorality. So now spiritually appraise this, okay? From 1 Timothy 2.9, spiritually appraise this. Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments. So what's that got to do with me? All right. Because the men are supposed to dress like men. The men are supposed to act like men, right? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. But you better remember, guys, gents, that we are the bride of Christ. That's right. We are the bride of Christ. We need to be dressed morally. All right. That is the truth mm. that we need to gird our loins with. It is about that modesty yeah, because yeah. we are we are the bride of Christ. Beware of committing spiritual adultery against Jesus, our bridegroom, who is soon to come and giving the devil opportunity. That's why we need to gird our lines. Okay. We need to be careful about our moral behavior. Mm. That's different than righteousness. Yes. But it's important. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry.